，然后我们继续今天的那个报告，然后继续由那个唐建明老师介绍那个田那个地方表示，这是那、这个所学校第一周呢，唐建明老师也是唐建明老师介绍的一个报告，嗯、大家好。So just a minor correction. The so last time I wrote, uh, if H is not a unimodular group, then uh, we have this. Uh, okay. But uh, actually, the uh, character should be on the right. Uh, sorry, on the left. So I take a minus one power. So uh, you can find out on this side. Okay, so like this. Uh, depending on uh, how you define this character, actually, but uh, by convention, uh, we uh, put this on the left. Okay. Uh, so we will use this character later on. And sometimes I emphasize this H is a subgroup of G, so sometimes I write uh, this delta H as a delta uh, HG, okay? So just emphasize H is a subgroup of G. Okay, so, um, you know, in representation theory, very often we want to compute the inner finding space of two representations. So, and uh, in particular, uh, some representations usually, uh, well, you consider induced representations. So something like uh, this. <coughs> uh, maybe I use uh, tau, okay, here. And if you, uh, if you use Frobenius reciprocity, then you have, uh, uh, let's say, what, uh, what do I want? This, so this should be K. Okay, I use Frobenius reciprocity to the subgroup K. So you have this. So on this side, we have a restriction of an induction. And we want to understand this. That means how this representation is decomposed. Okay. What are the uh, components of this representation? So we have this Mackey induction formula for finite group. So in the finite group case, If G is finite, <coughs> then we have this uh, Mackey induction formula. Uh, so it looks like this. Okay. So this is isomorphic to a direct sum of uh, here. G running over the double coset, uh, I think it's like this, okay, by H and K. And now yeah, on this, uh, for each component, it looks like this. So it's a bit uh, complicated. Straight. Okay, let, let me, uh, let me. And you can see, okay, so So it's an induction <coughs> to 
from this intersection k with the g inverse conjugate of h. And I'm inducing a representation restricted from the uh, g, con g inverse conjugate of h to uh, its intersection with k of this representation. So this sigma g is a representation on uh, Okay, a representation on G inverse HG. Okay, so it takes value if I have G inverse HG, then it is just the value of the representation itself. Okay. It's a lengthy formula that uh, uh, it tells you how this. Uh, process, okay, there's a restriction of induction, it tells you how it decomposes into uh, some simpler representation. Okay. So this is the finite group situation. Now we want a similar formula. This formula is called the geometric lemma. Okay. So in the periodic case, we want to uh, we want to get a formula for uh, these kind of representations. Okay. So because uh, for periodic groups, we are interested in parabolic induction. <coughs> and then uh, we, uh, what's the symbol for Shad K restriction? So, uh, uh, okay. So, say, say if we have two parabolic subgroups. P theta and P omega, they are standard parabolic subgroups. Okay? And each of them has a Levy decomposition. Uh, sorry, M. So I want a formula for for computing uh, for computing uh, the parabolic induction okay, from one par parabolic and then take shifting restriction by another parabolic. Okay. We want to compute this. So you see, the point is uh, this double coset here. So we want to understand this double coset, G, modulo one parabolic and another double coset. Uh, then we know from the first class, we have this uh, blue hat decomposition. Tells us that 
we have a bijection. with the corresponding double close set for the wild group. Okay, we call that this W. This W is uh, the normalizer modulo. Well, uh, as Stephen pointed out that uh, this should be the centralizer. Okay, but I think in our case, the centralizer is just uh, T. Okay, so anyway, that is a minor point. Okay, so we have uh, this finite group. That is the point. And is is w uh, w omega is the, uh, the corresponding wild group for the Levy. Okay, so that is. Uh, um, and okay, so that is a subgroup. <coughs> so we have a bijection between two double coset spaces such that G is a strong union of the double code sets. And with this bijection, you can choose representatives in the wild group. OK? So I just recall what I told you in the second class. to simplify my induction space. Well, uh, not really simplify, but uh, I want to get a similar decomposition. So, so we call this uh, induction space. Uh, so, so we, uh, I'll write this I to be uh, the inducer. Induced representation uh, is the uh, iota. Okay. So this induction space I, if I write <coughs> it in the full form, is the function space from G to uh, this uh, U, where U, okay, so sigma acts on a vector space U. Okay, so this U. Uh, this U is not a uniform radical. Okay, I, I'm uh, somehow repeating notation. Okay, but this, this U is the one for, for sigma, the representation space. Okay, some functions such that if you left translate by an element in P theta, then satisfy the equation. So sigma p, delta p uh, half power. Okay, like this, with uh, some smoothness condition. I don't write it down. Okay. This is the induction space. And now, I want to use this decomposition. So this, uh, I think, uh, this JW to be all the functions in I such that the support of this function, uh, you know the meaning of uh, support of the function, no? So this is 
just uh, uh, so if a function is defined on G, so it's just the subset <coughs> in G such that uh, f x is not C. Okay. So people call it a uh, support. So it's a subset in G, and we want this subset to be lying inside the double quote set represented by W. So the set is uh, this one. of I. Representation in general. So I just I just leave it here. 
Sorry, perhaps I just leave it here. Uh, but I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you this proposition. Okay, this J W Okay, this J W is a representation of this parabolic subgroup. In particular, it contains n omega. So I can take the covariance of uh, JW by n omega. Okay. Uh, so remember, uh, yesterday I I defined this. Okay. So V n is just P modulo V bracket n. So this P bracket and is the <coughs> is the span of all these. Okay. So I just take my subspace G W and then apply Shake function. Okay, Shake restriction. Then this looks like uh, the following. Okay, so at the beginning we have a modular character, okay? And uh, so a modular character here times the induced representation of uh, of m omega from this subgroup <coughs> of a Shake restriction of This unipolar subgroup times the modular character of this uh, unipolar uh, red. the formula. Uh, but let me uh, explain a little bit. Okay, so now, uh, first of all, forget about all these, okay? Okay, forget about all these. What's the thing in the middle? Is that, uh, so this one is the uh, conjugate of sigma by w, okay? You choose a representative in your double pull set like what you did in the original Mackey uh, induction, okay, uh, i.e. okay? So first of all, you conjugate it, and so, <coughs> so this one, this sigma w is a representation of the w inverse conjugate of this m sigma, okay? And then I apply Shakay restriction to this, Unipotent radical. Okay, this uh, so this reductive group intersect the unipotent radical of uh, of omega. Okay, so this is a unipotent radical of this parabolic subgroup. 
is the parabolic subgroup of omega intersect with this reductive group. Okay, and this parabolic subgroup this parabolic subgroup has Levy component The conjugate of m theta in the set m omega. Okay, it's just the intersection of two Levy subgroups. Okay, this is a Levy, although it's uh, conjugated by W, but still is a Levy. This m omega is a Levy. And this Levy is sitting in this base. Levy here, okay. So it's like a, it's, so this is a big levy, and this is like a smaller levy. Okay. And then after I take the uh, this uh, Shaky function, I change my levy. Okay. Originally I used this as my big levy. Now I switch to this one. It is m omega. And inside m omega, I take this parabolic subgroup. Okay, so this is a parabolic subgroup, subgroup in m omega. Okay, is this m omega intersecting this parabolic subgroup in G? So it's a subparabolic subgroup in this lab. And then I take induction. Okay, so if you forget about these modular characters, this part is just the Mackie induction formula. But because your parabolic subgroups are not really modular, so you have to remember all these, uh, all these kind of uh, <coughs> troublesome characters. Okay. But you just uh, keep track of the calculation, and you get all these. So I uh, I won't explain uh, these two uh, characters. Okay, I uh, um, so the symbol tells you what they are. The important part is the middle. It is a Mackey expression. Okay. So this is the geometric lemma. It tells you your induction can be decomposed into these components. And then for each component, if you compute the Shaké restriction, then it gives you this Mackie form of an induced representation. So, uh, here I let you to do this exercise. So you can just check this formula for GL2. If you, okay, so uh, here for GL2, you have only this parabolic subgroup. Not the group G itself, but this is the uh, minimum parabolic subgroup, which is just 
a multiplication of t. Okay, t t is the diagonal subgroup, and this u is the unipotent subgroup. Okay, so GL two is simple, <coughs> and I'll let you to compute this. Okay, so uh, show that. So this is the uh, induction from the trivial character of B. You take Shaké functor, okay? So you uh, Shaké restrict to this uh, U. And this is given by, okay, so after the Shaké restriction, you should get a representation on the levy. And in this case, the levy is T. Okay, so I'll tell you how it looks like. So this is the trivial character of T plus the modular character relative to T. Okay. Remember this is a character of the levy of your parabolic subgroup here. Okay? So in this case this is T. So it's a sum of two characters. You can say this is a two-dimensional representation, so it's not too big. Okay, this is this is infinite dimensional, this induced representation. But the Shaké founder is simple. Uh, and you maybe use a different pen because it's already oh, it's fading out. Okay. So I, I leave you to check. If you apply uh, this uh, formula, okay, then uh, that would be pretty easy. <coughs> uh, and as a remark, okay, remember this representation can be defined for any reductive group, okay? So uh, not just for the uh, GL2. Okay. This is this time of representation uh, can be any reductive group. <coughs> so a remark is that uh, this formula this formula star holds holds for any but the proof requires some understanding of uh, certain combinatorics of wild groups, so I will not go into it. Uh, 
uh, well, there are many methods, but uh, one way to do it is uh, to show to show that the intertwining space of this time of representation to itself. Uh, I, I think you can write it in this way: okay? the uh, endomorphism. Okay. Or, or okay. If you don't know the meaning of endomorphism, it's just the space of homomorphism to itself. Okay, uh, homomorphism of uh, representation to itself. Okay, so you show that uh, this space is uh, one-dimensional. So, so you show that this is one. groups, uh, but now it's a bit more complicated, okay? So you have to, um, let's see, you have to understand this type of representation. Uh, okay, well, um, well, as an endomorphism space, you know it's always greater than one, okay? So you have to check it's less than one, okay? This is always true. It's always true. But on the other hand, you want to show it is less than one, so you make use of this induced representation. Okay? Remember, okay, what is timer? Maybe I should uh, I should recall this timer representation. I defined it yesterday, so it's uh, Induced representations, but from a proper subgroup P not equal to B. So we use this. And now, as a portion of the induced representation is less than the intertwining space of uh, the Steiber. to the full induced representation, okay? This is a portion of that, okay? So you have, uh, you have this uh, comparison. Then you apply geometric lemma. Uh, so then you have uh, uh, this uh, T.
we 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 leave this point a bit like this. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like okay. Uh, so maybe I just write it here. Okay. You use uh, <coughs> geometric lemma. We use Frobenius reciprocity and geometric lamp. This is uh, a special kind of representations called superpositive. Okay. So the definition is simple. So if yeah, so we have uh, this pi b to be an admissible representation. And we call this representation high super testable. If the Shaky functor high uh, V N write it like this, okay? If V N is zero for parabolic subgroup. means any Chate restriction of your representation is zero. If it happens, then we call our representation super custom. <coughs> so here I give uh, construction of one such representation. But I think I don't have time to explain why it is supercuspidal, uh, but this is uh, known to be a supercuspidal representation. So here I do one example. So this uh, pi is this kind of compact induction, okay? So uh, here I have a subgroup J uh, to, well, here I take G to be the general in the group uh, GL2, okay? So G is GL2. And this pi is a compact induction from a subgroup J. I'll tell you what it is. Okay, to the uh, to GL2 of a representation lambda of that. Okay, where is J? It's a compact subgroup K0 times the center of the uh, of GL2. So I'm ready here. This K0 is uh, what we usually just call it GL2 of set P. Okay. But you have to be careful. The definition is uh, all the matrices with integral coefficients is invertible, and its inverse also has integral coefficients. Okay. So this is K 
traceable, and set is just the center of GL2. So we know this is just uh, the diagonal subgroup with both entries equal. Okay, so this is the center. <coughs> and what is lambda? on K0 and a representation of Z. Z is a billion, so I want this representation to be a character. Okay. So, so on K0, we define the following. So we uh, um, okay, so now uh, here you observe the following. Okay, so so there is a subgroup K1, which is the identity matrix plus the two by two matrices with entries in the maximal ideal generated by P. of K0 by K1. This is isomorphic to the general linear group with entries in FP, where FP is the finite field of uh, P elements. is uh, uh, set P, uh, set P, model, uh, modulo the ideal, is the final field. Okay, if you forget about this uh, sub P, with uh, this set, okay, this sub P, if you forget about this, and you know this is a field. In general, you have uh, you also have these kind of quotients for compact subgroups. Okay, so on here, so I define our representation on K zero one K one. That okay? This representation I use the symbol row such that. The subspace of fixed points by the corresponding unipotent subgroup. Uh, here, here I use U. Okay, I use U. Okay, remember U is uh, just the upper triangular unipotent subgroup. Okay, so I take a representation such that the fixed point space is three. So it's a subgroup of this portion, but I extend it to K0 by uh, pullback. Okay, so you have uh, K0, 1K1, row is a representation to some uh, general linear group. Okay, so 
we have a projection map from k0 to this quotient, so I put it back. And I get a representation of k0. I still call it rho. Okay. So I get a representation rho on the uh, compact subgroup here. And on the center, I just take a character and to guarantee I get a representation on J, I just make sure that their restrictions are equal. So, so on that, I take a character. So this is uh, the central character of my representation. Such that row intersect on uh, this uh, k zero. Okay, k zero intersect with z is equal to omega. Uh, this character also intersect on uh, also restrict to the intersection. Okay, uh, times times uh, identity operator on the representation space, okay? So just guarantee that uh, these, this character and this row have equal, uh, they are equal on the intersection, okay? So you can glue these two, you can glue them to obtain lambda okay. on the group J. is that um, so the proposition is that this pipe which is the compact induction from J to GL2 of lambda is irreducible. Well, uh, actually, I should emphasize that this row, uh, I should choose it to be irreducible. Choose row to be irreducible. So that lambda is also irreducible. And we can prove that this compact induction is also irreducible and supercuspular. So for this type of representations, this Chapter functor is always zero. some time, uh, then I'll give a final remark on the, uh, these kind of uh, representations. So we have seen many representations with different properties. And uh, we have also uh, this type of representation 
which is, uh, if you remember the definition yesterday, I say this fragmentation is square integrable modulo center, uh, uh, modulo center. Okay, and there are other types of representations that I don't have time to explain. Uh, there are also representations satisfy some uh, conditions on the uh, uh, the L two norm. Okay, so those are called temporal representation. Okay. Also, the supercluster allow the square. Uh, so a cuspidal, uh, square in the book. Yes. Yes. Actually, uh, uh, there is a better characterization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, um, uh, okay. I, I, I won't, I won't, uh, I won't give it here, but, uh, so a cuspidal representation is a square in the book. Yes. Okay. So we have a couple of, we have a couple of these two, but we don't have time to talk about this. And uh, as a request by Chong Han Bok, there are also some kind of uh, representation of unramified representation. So those are the representations such that if you uh, consider the fixed points subspace by uh, this K0 subgroup, okay, this K0, this K0, okay, say for GL2, you take that K0, then this is not 0. Okay. So, uh, you want me to give a classification? Uh, maybe, maybe just for GL2. Okay, so, uh, uh, okay, uh, maybe, maybe I'll skip that, okay, yeah, because uh, I don't have time, I think, yeah, but, okay, so, so what's the purpose of uh, talking about all these representations, because, because, uh, uh, okay, uh, let me put it this way, okay? Uh, an admissible, uh, maybe I should also need a usable representation uh, of, of B, of G, of B, of G, Q, B. appears as a local component of an uh, of an automorphic representation. Of this G A. Remember in Hanyan's course we learned this group G A. This GA is, uh, roughly speaking, the uh, product of uh, all this QP, okay, where P is a prime, or uh, you can take infinity, okay, so you get the field uh, R. Okay, so uh, say if this representation is uh, if this representation is pi p and it appears as a local component of this uh, uh, of pi, okay, pi is an automorphic representation, so it looks like this. Pi is a tensor product of all these pi p. And depending on uh, the properties of this pi p, that means whether it is uh, supercuspidal or uh, some square integral representation or is tempered. The 
properties of pi p. Uh, have some uh, number theoretical consequences. Okay? So that means it's not just some uh, special properties just for the, uh, 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 just for a local field. That in general, it has number theoretical consequences for automorphic representations, okay. For example, uh, this uh, what we call uh, the uh, generalized Ramanujan conjecture. Uh, Ramanujan conjecture okay? it has something to do with the uh, tempered representations. Okay. Although I don't have time to explain it. Okay, so these are important properties for local representations, and uh, perhaps I'll just uh, stop here. Okay, so uh, let me just say uh, I just give a very tiny part of the theory of the periodic uh, representations. Okay, so if you are interested, then uh, you can. Uh, take a look at various uh, sources. Okay, one of these is uh, this notes. Okay, by Castleman that I already told you in the first class. Okay, uh, there are other good books. Uh, one is this uh, Danny Bond. Uh, the, uh, the book is called uh, Automorphic Representations of uh, GL2. So, uh, so in particular, you can read chapter four for the uh, representation of periodic uh, representations of the uh, periodic uh, reductive groups. Uh, another book is by Bushnell and Henya. So the book is called Local Lyman's <coughs> Conjecture. Okay. Uh, so I'm just giving you uh, the books for a very small reductive group, okay, GL2. That uh, as a starting point, if you understand everything for GL2, then uh, it will be good for other reductive groups. Okay. I'll just stop here.